Praise God. Let's just stand up and welcome the Holy Spirit. Mighty Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're here right now. Right here in Galveston Island. Right here on the seawall. Oh, let your fire fall today. Lord, we ask that anybody that's not right with you, let them get right with you today. Lord, I thank you for your power being displayed. Let, your, let us get in the tail of praise. Let your throne come down with your glory and your wheels of fire. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we honor you, Lord. Oh, we magnify your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Church on the beach, we worship you, God. Your fire is here. Your anointing is here. Glory to God. As we continue to worship, if you have tithes and offerings, you can bring them forward at this time. Or if you're watching online, you can just go to DarylMcManus.com and you can tithe or sow that way. If you have the cash app, you can just type in Final Awakening. Final Awakening. And you can give that way. And uh, I believe my wife is probably going to type in how you can do PayPal on on the feed, Cindy. And Lord, we just give you praise. Lord, I agree with those that are tithers and givers. You're rebuking the devour for their sake, opening the windows of heaven, pouring them out a blessing. They won't have room enough to receive it. Lord, those that have businesses, the devourer won't come in and cause problems because you're rebuking the devourer for their sake. And Lord, we just give you praise for that right now. In the mighty, glorious name of Jesus. Lord, we're here. We're going to sing praises to your name. I sing praises to your name. Oh. great for your name is great and greatly to be praised oh yes we sing praises lord i sing praises Sing 
again, again. There's healing in your name. There is healing in your name. Oh, Lord, healing in your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. Sing it one more time. I sing praises. Everything you got. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, that's it. Praises to your name. Oh. Easy on the phone. You can go to Great Road or that anywhere I'm reading. 
I usually, when I'm reading out the Amplified, I use the classic, but um, I like the way it reads better in the, the Amplified 2015 version in this passage. James chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, says, Not many of you should become teachers, serving in an official teaching capacity, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who are teachers will be judged by a higher standard because we have assumed greater accountability and more condemnation if we teach incorrectly. Verse 2, James says by the Holy Spirit, For we all stumble in sin in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, never saying the wrong thing, he is a perfect man, fully developed in character, without serious flaws, able to bridle his whole body and reign in his entire nature. Painting his human faults and weaknesses. Now, if we put bits into the horse's mouth to make them obey us, we guide their whole body as well. And and look at the ship. Even though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are still directed by a very small rudder. Wherever the impulse of the helmsman determines, or the pilot determines, they five in the same sense the tongue is a small part of the body. Now everybody is where you watch, you're doing live, or you're watching my Facebook, or you're getting it by YouTube, or you're getting it, just stick your tongue out at me, I'm going to stick mine out. Lord Jesus, we love you. The tongue. The power of the tongue. Everyone God's saying just like the, the person who's on a horse right using the reins and puts bits into that horse's mouth. And wherever, wherever that, right that bit is being directed, that and horse has to go. When we speak our tongue, our he, he compares it to like also rudders on ships. Little rudder is, is, is telling that huge you. ship where to go. Or if you have a boat, there's a rudder telling it where to go. Your tongue, what you say with your mouth will cause your body to line up. Whether you're saying things that pleases God or you're saying things that please the devil. And so the scripture says in verse 5, in the same sense the tongue, Excuse me, is a small part of the body and yet boasts a great thing. See by comparison how great a forest is set on fire by a small part. And the tongue is in a sense a fire, the very world of injustice and unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which contaminates the whole, the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life, the cycle of man's existence, and is itself set on fire by hell, the henna. For every species of beasts and birds of reptiles and sea creatures is tamed and has been tamed by the human race, but that no one can tame the human tongue. I don't care if you go to 10,000 hours of counseling, that counseling will not cause your tongue to be tamed. No human can tame your tongue. That's why out of all the members, God chose the tongue to yield to the Holy Spirit when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. And it gives you your own prayer language because your tongue will direct the body. Amen. And if the Holy Spirit has a hold of your tongue, then He's got you. He's got you. Glory to God. And no one can tame the tongue that is a restless evil, undisciplined, 
uncensored, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. These things, my brothers, should not be this way. But we have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of God and profound respect for His people. Does the spring send out from the same opening both fresh water and bitter? Of course, the answer is no. Can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives? Or a grapevine produce fish? And of course, the answer is no. Nor can salt water produce bread? Out here in the Gulf of salt water. But when you want to drink, we as humans, we need fresh water. Are you listening? And then so, the tongue, the tongue, the tongue blesses God and then cursing. There's a difference between cursing and touching. You can curse without cussing, but you can't cuss without cursing. I'm going to say that again. You can curse without cussing, but you can't cuss without cursing. You say, how do I curse without cussing? Telling your child, you'll never not be any cursing. You're just like so and so. You're stupid. Am I on Facebook Live? I'm hearing. I'm hearing it play right now. So let's check just a minute. Because they're viewing it. Are we, all right, are we still on Facebook? All right, can you see me? You can see me. Okay, thank you, Justin, my oldest son, for getting that fixed. Glory to God. Amen. It was recording and playing back the worship service while it was recording. <laughs> Oh, it was playing the actual song. Okay. All right. Anyway, we got it fixed. See, we're live, unedited. We don't edit. I'm not going to edit that out. This is real. This is real. It's not like a nice little, neat little 30 minute TV program where if something happened in the service that they didn't want, they took it out to make it look nice and neat. The, the gospel is not nice and neat. It was a bloody mess. Jesus' blood was shed. He died on a cross for you to rescue you and I from hell. Amen. It wasn't edited out. We got places that are ashamed of the cross. They don't even want a cross in their building with a church on it. They're ashamed of the cross. Well, I want to tell you, it's the cross that gives us life. It's because Jesus died on that cross that we could have a first class ticket to heaven. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Paul's messages in the Bible were not edited. Jesus' preaching wasn't edited. James, were, were pre, uh, James' preaching wasn't edited. And we're not edited. Praise God. It's live. What's going on is what's going on. It's fog here today. Amen. But God's blessed us here on the last day of February in 2021 and we're still having church at church on the beach. Glory to God. Thank you for your favor. 
Yes, Lord. All right. So, okay, back to that. You curse somebody when you you belittle them. When you belittle somebody with your mouth or put somebody down or compare them to somebody or tell them they're stupid, you're, you're no good, you're, you'll never amount to anything. That is cursing. That is not cussing. Using God's name in vain, F words and, and, and Jesus' name in vain, that is cussing and cursing. None of it should be coming out of our mouths. Salt water and fresh water don't come out of the same spigot. If it's either salt or it's fresh. And we as believers, when we yield to the Holy Spirit and we pray in other tongues, we pray in the prayer language He gives us, then it tames this thing. Glory to God. No man can tame this thing, but the Holy Ghost can. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, God can tame the tongue when we yield to Him. We should be producing the nine fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Everybody say love. Everybody say joy. Everybody say peace. Kindness. Now, we're not going to go into the Greek word for kindness, but when you dig into that word, I've, I've dug into it, it actually means that what comes out of your mouth is not malignant. It is benign. Benignity is kindity. That's how you remember it. Everybody say benignity is kindity. And so when, the, when God has our tongue, we don't have anything malignant coming out. In other words, malignant kills people. We can kill with the tongue. The tongue is, is a powerful force. And so when we have these fruit of the Spirit, everybody say these fruit of the Spirit, then what comes out of our mouth, everybody say what comes out of my mouth will be benign. It won't kill somebody. It won't hurt them. It won't wound them. All right, so everybody say love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And we're ever living in an age when people are out of control, going off the deep end, going on shooting sprees, killing people, all this kind of mess. If they knew Jesus and these nine fruit of the Spirit were operating in their life, then they would have self-control. They wouldn't be doing any of that. Lord, are you listening? Amen. Everybody say the power of the tongue. And that's the message today. And so gentleness, self-control against such things, there is no law. You know, all the way back in Genesis, you don't have to turn there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And then it says the Spirit began to move or vibrate or hover over the face of the waters. But nothing happened until God spoke words. Genesis 1.3, it says, Then God said, Genesis 1.6 says, Then God said. Genesis 1.9 says, Then God said. Genesis 1.11, Then God said. 1.14, Then God said. Genesis 1.20 says, Then God said. Then it happened. Whatever He said, happened. Genesis 1.22, And God blessed them saying. Genesis 1.24, Then God said. Genesis 1.26, then God said. 
Genesis 128, then God blessed them and God said. And then Genesis 129, and God said. I believe He was trying to get something over to us. Are you listening? Lord, because our words are powerful. They're so powerful that God had to change somebody's name, some people's names in the Bible. Genesis 17, verse 5. God said, No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. And so from that point on, every time Sarai, God changed her name to Sarah. And so every time she said Abraham, she was saying, Father of many nations, Father of many nations, Father of many nations. And yet they were past age to have children. But God said, you're going to have a child. And so every time she called him, after his name changed, come here, Father of many nations. Come here, Father of many nations. Come here, Father of many nations. And then it's in Genesis 17, 15, and 16. Then God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai. But Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be mother of many nations. Everybody say mother of many nations. And so they be, they be, their names were changed to father of many nations, mother of many nations. And she shall be a mother of, many of, all, of nations. Kings of people shall be from her. Glory to God. So what should come out of our mouth? Turn to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. What, what book? This book. The Bible. Amen. When we get God's words in our mouth, then we're speaking life. Are you listening? We even activate our angels. God has assigned us angels, all of us. But they are activated according to what comes out of our mouth. Or there are many angels that are standing in the unemployment line. Are you listening? You say, you got to be kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Standing in the unemployment line because they're waiting for a Christian to put God's Word in their mouth. And Psalm 103 says that angels hearken, they obey the voice of God's Word. Everybody say the voice of God's Word. I've, I've quoted a bunch of Scripture today out of my mouth. I quoted Psalm 91 as one of them. And therefore my angels were already working. I didn't have to be concerned about getting on the highway if somebody was going to run into me or something like that because my angels are taking care of it. Amen. Are you listening? It's the power of the tongue. Say the power of the tongue. All right. Do you know that before David killed Goliath, he spoke words? He spoke words. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning with verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, I mean, he's looking at this huge giant man. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. 
But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, notice he said it first, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. The whole army of Israel is shaking, afraid of this one giant. King Saul's afraid. Nobody will go up against him. And so here is a young boy, a very young man named David. And he says, I will go against him. Lord, and he says, but and he says, and this day, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air. In other words, not only are you going to die, your army is going to die. Because I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. To the camp of the, uh, of, the, of the camp, of, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. Glory to God. Glory to God. What comes out of your mouth when a tragedy happens? It's very important. What comes out of your mouth? Second Kings chapter 4, beginning with verse 25, it says, And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. Now why did she do this? Because God gave her a son, and the son died. She put the she put him on the prophet's bed. In other words, you're not you won't even be able to come go to sleep when you stay with us until you deal with this matter. But she never spoke death. Look look at it. So it was when the man of God, which was which was uh, Elisha, saw her afar off. He said to his servant Gehazi, "Look, the Shunammite woman." Please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, It is well. Oh, but her son was lying dead on the prophet's bed. No, that's not what she was saying. She said, It is well. Well, in other words, God's going to take care of this matter. Are you listening? And 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 the prophet came and the boy was raised from the dead. Are you listening? How many of you getting anything this morning? The power of the tongue. Look at Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Justin, I need you just to come here by me for just a little bit. Come on up here. This is my oldest son, Justin. A few years ago, He fell, and I want you just to tell how how high it was you fell and, and what you hit. Say that part. All right, so uh, I was actually working in construction, and uh, I was on the top of this. It's a two-story building, and we were ripping the roof off, and I was taking the rafters out. And there was a nail, and I could see it. It was a couple rafters away. Uh, a joist, sorry. And um, anyways... Uh, instead of going and getting it, uh, I had several guys working underneath me, and so I was trying to be fast. And so I thought, when I get there, I'll, I'll pull that nail. 
and then I forgot about it. Uh, next thing I know, I was falling 27 feet, uh, smashed into the neighboring roof, uh, bounced off of that, it hit the cinder brick wall. There was like a privacy fence, it was about maybe that far or so, uh, you know, and I landed long ways in it. My uh, joints were out of socket. Uh, I wasn't breathing. Um, yeah. But God had put somebody that was working with me, used to be at an EMT, uh, and he noticed that I wasn't up there anymore, and so he ran down and he grabbed me, and when he did, I started breathing, and my, my joints started falling back into place, uh, and they were able to get me to the hospital, and you know, no broken bones. Yeah, so, amen. But you, but, but, but you see, when we got word, we were like almost three hours away. I had already spoken that morning, great is the shalom of my children. I had already called him out. Shalom, shalom means wholeness, soundness, safety, health, prosperity, security, freedom from disaster. No good thing withheld. Nothing missing and nothing broken. I had already said that. I had quoted that scripture out of Isaiah. And so when we got word that he wasn't breathing, we had Cindy and I, we didn't panic. We stood on that scripture. And we, we went to Ben Tob Hospital. God had touched him and there was not one broken bone in his body because the power of the tongue. Everybody say the power of the tongue. The power of speaking God's word. And he's standing here today. Glory to God. Thank you, son. Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. In the power of the tongue. When you get God's word in your mouth, life will happen. Life will happen. Are you listening? Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then he said to me, this is the angel that appeared to Daniel. Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And the angel said this, and I have come because of your words. Your words will activate your angels. Your angels. Let me get my physical Bible. The Lord wants us to go there. Let's go to Psalm 103. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're glorious. Psalm 103, verses 19 and 20. The Lord has established His throne in the heavens, and His kingdom rules over all. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, you His angels, you mighty ones, who do His commandments, Hearkening to what? To the written word? No. Hearkening. Angels hearken. They obey the voice of God's word. The voice of God's word. Are you listening? Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The power of words. The power of words. The Lord says, stop there. I've got I had all kind of other scriptures. But he said, just stop there. Glory to God. Let's all just bow our heads for a moment.
Close your eyes, please. Oh, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you, Lord. With every head's bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. If the Lord Jesus were to come in the next moment, or if you were to breathe your last breath, are you absolutely sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would go to heaven? If you're here today and you say, I'm not positive, I'm not positive that I would go to meet the Lord. I'm not positive. Remember me in this prayer, Pastor. Remember me in this prayer. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up? Just say, pray for me. Yes, yes, I see those hands. Yes, hands going up. Yes. Lord, I thank you, Lord. People watching, wherever you're watching, on Facebook or YouTube or wherever other way. I'm going to pray a prayer right now. I want you to repeat that prayer after me and a miracle is going to take place in your life. You're going to become a brand new creation in God. And I want the whole congregation repeating it after me with those that raise their hand. Say, oh God. Say, I realize without Jesus... I'm lost. But oh God, today I turn my life over to you, Lord. Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life. I turn away from a life of sin. I'm coming to you, Jesus. I say it with my mouth. Jesus, you're my Lord. I believe with my heart, not my head, that God raised you from the dead. Therefore, I'm born again. Therefore, I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Now, I want you to praise the Lord right now. Give Him praise. You, you, give Him praise. Lift your hands up to Him and just say, thank you, Lord. That's it. Tell him thank you, right? That's it. Yes, you've become a new creation today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you prayed that prayer if you're watching it. You're a brand new creation in Christ. Oh, you need to get to a Bible-believing church. Oh, if you don't know of one, or if you can get out here to church on the beach, man, God is moving powerfully out here. You're going to get the word here, or you can tune in on, like, on Facebook here, 10 a.m. on Sundays. I'm going to say goodbye to our Facebook audience because we're going to open up a time of prayer. People have needs that are here. We're going to pray for them. We'll see you next time.